Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to print all the subsets of a list and this can be in any order. So for example, if I have the list 1, 2, 3, 4, then the output I'm going to get are all of these. Okay, so this could be an empty subset, we could have subsets of length 1, we could have subsets of length 2, length 3, and then there's going to be one of length 4. And keep in mind, each of these sets, because they're sets, there's really no defined order. So for example, with 3, 4, you could either print this like this, or you could print it 4, 3. It really doesn't matter. So the first thing to figure out here is how do we go about actually generating these substrings or these subsets? Well, in order to do that, let's just list out our elements. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now that we've done that, we can recognize that for each of these elements, in any particular subset, we're either going to include the element or we're not going to include the element. So let's say that 0 is when I'm not including the element and 1 is when I am including the element. So if I want to generate the empty subset, then what I'm going to do is this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 0, and this will be 0. And these numbers here mean that we're either using the element at that location or we're not using the element at that location. So because we're not using any of these elements, they're all zeroed out. This means we're going to produce the empty subset. Now, what if we just want four, just like we see here? Well, if we just want four, we don't need anything else. So everything else can be zeroed out. So zero, 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 one. And so one is under the four. It's only under the four. So our subset is only going to consist of four. Now, what if we maybe wanted 1, 3, and 4? Well, we can say that we want 1, we want to have 3, and we want to have 4, but we don't want to have 2, so that'll be a 0. And so this means that we're going to have 1, 3, 4. So just to reiterate, if we have a 1 at a particular location, that means we're going to include it in the subset that we generate. If we have a 0, that means we're not going to include it. Now we get to the next step. How do we actually generate these numbers here? How do we generate these sequences of zeros and ones? Well, this is where we can do recursion. So we can say that we define a function. Let's just call it function for now. And it's going to take a list as input as well as a list of toggles. So what does that mean? Well, this toggles list is going to represent all these numbers. So each of the elements at any index in toggle is going to correspond to the element in list. So if an element in toggle is 1, then that corresponding element in list is, not, is, is going to be used. But if it's 0, then that corresponding element in list is not going to be used. And then, of course, the third parameter that we're going to need here is some counting variable, some i. And we're just saying i so then we can start at the first element and proceed all the way to the end. And so the next part is going to be choosing when we're going to use a 0 and when we're going to use a 1. So that's going to be if i is not greater than or equal to the length of this list. Because if it is, then we can just stop there and we can print every element in list that has been toggled in toggles. So our recursive step would be that at a particular i, we're going to toggle it. So toggle i, and let's say we toggle it so that it is not used. So that's going to be 0. And then we have to recurse with this. So we have to call function again. And we call it with the same parameters, except that we increase i by 1. And we're just doing that so we don't run into a maximum recursion error. Because we want to eventually be done going through the entire list. And then after we do this, we can toggle it so that we are using the element. So toggle i is equal to 1. And then we call the same function. So we can say function list toggles. And of course, i plus 1. So this was the recursive step. Now, our base case. So what would be our base case? Well, remember that i has to end eventually. So we know i is going to end once we've covered every index in our list. 
So once, so if i is greater than or equal to the length of the list, then we know that we can stop there because there's no more elements to either use or not use. So once we're done with this, we can go through every element, go through every element in toggles. So go through all elements in toggles. And if that element is a uh, one, if the element is one, we want to include that in a subset that we're creating. So include it in subset. And in this case, we're just printing it. So all we have to do is indicate that we want to print that element. Otherwise, we don't have to do this. If the element is zero, we don't have to do all this. And once we're done going through all the elements, so afterwards, we're going to just print the subset that we get. So print subset. And that should be it for this code here. So just to go through this again, all we're doing is creating a recursive function so that at each recursive step, we're either toggling an element so that we're using it or we're toggling it such that we're not using it. And then once we reach the end, we just print all the elements that we have used as a subset and we just ignore the ones that we haven't. And this will work for every single subset. So we'll be able to eventually print all of these. All right, let's go ahead and implement this in Python. So our code is going to consist of two parts. The first part is going to be our print subsets function. That's what we're going to call it. And the second part is going to be where we're testing our function on the list that we had earlier. So we'll implement both parts in this segment. So the first step we have to do is define the function. So we'll say def print subsets. And our first parameter is going to be the list that we're going to get subsets of. So list. And then the next parameter we're going to need is a toggles list. This is going to keep track of whether we're going to include an element at a particular location or if we're not going to include an element at a particular location in list. And we're just going to set this equal to none because we'll assign it later to a list in the function itself. And then we'll also say i is equal to zero. So i is another parameter where it's going to keep track of what index we're currently at. So we can decide at that index whether we want to have that element in our subset or if we don't want to have the element in our subset. And then also so that we know when we've reached our base case or when we know to stop recursing. And again, we're just going to default it to zero because we don't have to really provide a parameter on the outside. It just makes it easier like this. Now inside our function, there's going to be two parts. So the first part is our quote unquote base case. And the second part is our recursive step. But before we even do that, we have to initialize toggles because right now it's set to none. And if it's set to none, then we won't actually be able to toggle anything. So let's just create a new list if there is no list. So if toggles is equal to none, which it will be at first, then we're going to set toggles equal to something. So toggles is going to be equal to, it's just going to be a list of zeros and it's going to be the same length as list. So times length of list. So that's just creating our toggles list. Now we get to our recursive function, our recursive step and our base case. So we'll first approach the base case. So the, ba the base case or how we know to stop is if i is greater than or equal to the length of list. And if that's the case, then there's no more elements that we can either include or exclude. So at this point, we can just print our subset. So how do we actually get that subset? Well, right now we have a list. It has all the elements it needs. And then we also have our toggles. And toggles contains zeros and ones indicating whether we're going to use the element or if we're going to not use the element. So we want to create a new list. Let's call it subset. And we want to set this equal to a list comprehension done upon list itself. And so the way we're going to do this is just bracket str lst bracket i. And I'll explain why we're doing why we're converting it to a string after we move on to the next step. So that for i in range length of list, if it has been toggled. So if this is equal to one. If it's equal to zero, then we don't want to add it to our subset. So this just efficiently parses out anything that we don't want. And now when we go to actually print the subset, we can print and we'll just do a little bit of string manipulation. So we want to make it look like a set of course, so we'll put a curly brace there plus. And now when we're doing, when we want to represent our subset, 
we can't actually just print the subset directly because it's going to look like a list and we wanted to do some formatting. So now we can explain why we converted this to a string. So we're converting this to a string because we're actually going to use the join function. So we're going to do comma dot join on subset. And so if we're going to use the join function, it only works on a list containing only strings. So that's why we had to convert all of these to strings. Now, once we do this, we can just add a closing curly brace just to finish out the styling. And that's all we have to do there. So that effectively prints our subset. Now we're on to the next part. So the next part is going to be a recursive step. So else. So if we have not reached the end of our list, that means there's still elements that we can toggle. So the first step, we have to toggle it so that it's not enabled, so that we're not using the element. So toggles i is equal to zero. And then we can call print subsets to recurse. Print subsets. We want to do it on list. Toggle doesn't change. But i changes. i becomes i plus one. And then we can do the same thing, except we set toggles bracket i to one, because now we want to use the element in our subset. So toggles bracket i is equal to one. And then we can just write the same line on line 12. So print subsets list toggles i plus one. And that's all our function needs to work properly. So now we can test this function out. So I can say print subsets, and then my list will be one, two, three, four. If you notice here, I'm not going to use any arguments for toggles and i because we've already defaulted them to certain values in our function itself. So now we can just save this and we can run this in the terminal and we should see that we get all the subsets. All right, so that's every single one of these here and there should be 24 total. Now, we, this isn't just restricted to these numbers. We can do anything. So I could say maybe a, b, x, and y, or x and y. And I can run that again and it should still do the same thing and it does. So it has a set containing all of these. So essentially our algorithm was such that we used a recursive function to go through every element in our list and decide whether we wanted to use it or not use it. And we did this by branching off every single time we had to make that decision. And finally, when we reached the end of our list, when we finally finished figuring out if we wanted to include an element or not include an element, that's when we could print that resulting subset. So that's it for this tutorial, and I hope this was helpful.